Peggy Sue. And she's a knockout. But, but you're, you're, more, you're more sophisticated than she is. You're more elegant than she is. 20 years older than she is. That hominy-fed hussy is one thing I don't, Tony. Youth. And that's one thing Edward's money can't find. Edward's money? That should be your money, too. Dad made you sign that agreement. But he did. And I'm afraid the only way his fortune could ever possibly become mine is if he were to drop dead before he divorced me. All right, please hold it. All right. Uh, that looked pretty good. Uh, can we get some more lights up here, please? Uh, thanks. And I killed the storm. I think I'll bring it back towards the end of the scene anyway. Uh, good job, guys. I'll bring you back in a few minutes and introduce you properly, but you can take a break. Well, you got us at an intense moment there. I was working on a little scene. Well, you'll see it later. I'm a, I'm a writer. Uh, a playwright, to be exact. No, uh, that's not entirely accurate. Uh, uh, I represent a playwright. I'm his alter ego, so to speak. Um, let's see, it'd probably help if I had a name you could call me by. Uh, so let's go with, um, let's see, writer's alter ego, alter, alter, uh, I got it. Walter. Close enough? Fine. Okay, now, nah, we'll call me Walter. Here's the deal. I thought you might find it interesting to see how I see every day, is it? Well, here's what we're gonna do. Since this is the easiest way to do it, we're gonna deconstruct the crime and show it to you. Now, since this is the easiest way to do it, um, let's get... Let's get moving, then. Um, so, the first thing I try to think about when I'm writing a play is the setting. I'm partial to old mansions like this one that's dark and gloomy. It creates the perfect ambiance for a murder to occur. Don't you think? You know, uh, I'm, I'm partial to fireplaces and uh, French doors, and I use them often. When the room lights go out, it provides just the right amount of low lighting to evoke a sinister atmosphere. Uh, for example, you see what I mean? Sort of makes you want to pull out a gun or knife or garage, doesn't it? No? Nah. Well, anyway, um, as I mentioned earlier, the French doors are really good if you wish to throw in a storm. Although, in my experience, I have learned to keep storm effects to a minimum, because if they go on too long, people in the audience start popping out and rushing down toward the restrooms. Uh, 86 the storm, please! All right. Yeah, that's better. That's good. Yeah. Um, oh, you, by the way. I noticed that uh, it looked like you were just about to jump off and run down the aisle. Uh, if you could hold it until intermission, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so, going onward. Sliding doors are great too. They work great for sudden entrances if you want them for that. Uh, generally, in my plays, I put some stairs back here to let you know that, uh, that the house is at least two stories high. The characters can go up and down them to their bedrooms, presumably. Off, up left here, there's a passageway to the kitchen and other rooms in the house. Off right, there's, a, there's an entrance for a doorway that stimulates an uh, entrance and exit for characters leaving the house. Off up above the fireplace over here, there's a door that uh, provides the killer to do his thing, or her thing, if I choose to use it for that matter. When it comes to writing plays, I'm an equal opportunity playwright. Uh, uh, anyways, that brings us to the subject of suspects. I guess I should probably introduce to you tonight's cast of characters. There are quite a few of them, I'll warn you. You know, it would be no fun trying to guess who a murderer was if you only had a few choices. I'll start with the people that you just saw. Allegra, Tony! I should mention that we are in the household of Edward Worthington, the ruthless and powerful millionaire. Now, these two, Allegra is Edward's wife. His second wife, I should be clear about. Uh, help me out. When Edward grew tired of his first wife, Justine, he divorced her and married me. It's an old story. Middle-aged man dumps first spouse for trophy wife. I suppose I should be grateful he didn't name me Heisman. <laughs> Not a chance, my dear. You know, I try to, I do go for laughs, but I 
blow, I <laughs> draw the line at low comedy. The light will suit you perfectly. It's beautiful and mysterious just like you. Thanks. I will do my best to live up to it. I'm Allegra's brother, Tony Blackwell. I'm a playboy, right? Can I help it if women find me irresistible? Hey. Yeah, you. How about meet me after the show, gorgeous? I know this nice little intimate place. We can have a supper for two. I beg you, Sue, but now I'm not so sure. I beg you, Sue. And she's a knockout. But, but you're, you're, more, you're more sophisticated than she is. You're more elegant than she is. 20 years older than she is. That hominy fed hussy is one thing I don't, Tony. Youth. And that's one thing Edward's money can't find. Edward's money? That should be your money, too. He had made you sign that agreement. But he did. And I'm afraid the only way his fortune could ever possibly become mine is if he were to drop dead before he divorced me. All right, please, hold it. All right. Uh, that looked pretty good. Uh, can we get some more lights up here, please? Uh, thanks. And I killed the storm. I think I'll bring it back towards the end of the scene anyway. Uh, good job, guys. I'll bring you back in a few minutes and introduce you properly, but you can take a break. Well, you got us at an intense moment there. I was working on a little scene. Well, you'll see it later. I'm a, I'm a writer, uh, a playwright to be exact. No, uh, that's not entirely accurate. Uh, uh, I represent a playwright. I'm his alter ego, so to speak. Um, let's see, it'd probably help if I had a name you could call me by. Uh, so let's go with, um, let's see, writer's alter ego, alter, alter, uh, I got Walter. Close enough? Fine. Okay. Now, nah, we'll call me 